invite to take the opening prayer. Republic of Nigeria, Your Excellency, President Excellency Ambassador Ibrahim Gambari, that's his main president. Your Excellency, Governor of your state. Your Excellency, Senator Doctor. Your Excellency, Senator Ben Ayami. Excellency, Governor of Thank you, Governor of Edo State. Your Excellency, Employee of Nigeria Police Force. The Soup Manager. Your Excellency, Honorable Mr. Niger Delta. Dr. Sage Hanere. Honorable Mr. Fodels. Mr. President has tasked members of this cabinet to ensure of that his commitment with regards to the NSAS process are fully executed. Here, how also warned that the right of citizens to protest must be respected and protected, for we exist in a democracy. However, in doing so, respect for the law and order must be adhered to, and the rights of other citizens must not be infringed upon. The figures, as they affect the South-South, indicate that 54 government facilities were attacked, while 23 government warehouses were looted. In addition, 53 private and corporate facilities were attacked while 21 civilians lost their lives in the NSAS protests in, the, in this region, with 18 others injured. Furthermore, seven police personnel were killed in this region by the rioters. That gives you the picture of the negative effect of the protests. All of us agree that the Nigeria police has been stretched beyond measure. And we believe that there is no longer any rational basis for the delay in the implementation of what has become a national consensus that what is required in our nation is to have both the federal and the state and even local government police or security agencies. To treat traditional rulers as though they are non-entities is very unfortunate. It's as bad as saying your prayers and forgetting to add amen to it. And you can find that Nigeria is going round and round in the wilderness for 40 years because the traditional rulers who are the original uh, stakeholders and actually the government and the, of the people by the people too, have been neglected and sidelined. It is most unfortunate, and I think we should now have the traditional rulers back in the Constitution. People may not want to hear it now, and may not want to say it, but it has to be said. It has to be said that the political power must shift, and the only way it's going to shift is for us to have a restructured Nigeria. If we must move forward, as a stable, united, and indivisible nation, we must have the courage of our conviction to begin to address all the issues in an honest and balanced manner that will restore Nigeria to the dreams of our founding fathers who collectively negotiated and agreed on a federal republic of Nigeria. In this regard, I need to state very unequivocally and on behalf of the people of this region that we believe, support, and are committed to the restructuring of Nigeria in a way and manner that guarantees, one, true federalism and devolution of power to the states, including states creating and managing their own police and security architecture under a federal structure as it is in all federal and some non-federal systems in the world. Two, true fiscal federalism, guided by the principle of derivation, revenue sharing, and control of resources, 
by each state or the federation as it was the case in the First Republic. My assignment here is, is brief, and I will be very, very brief, to respond to the position canvassed by the zone. But before I do that, I want to join in commending not just the governors of the South-South, but indeed all the governors of the 19 states for the actions they took to help to bring peace and normalcy as a fallout of the NSAS protest. But more important than that, I want to reserve the biggest commendation, frankly, to the youth leaders and the youths of the South-South geopolitical zone. I say this because we all know that, yes, we saw the activities of the youth in the other parts of the country, bad as it was, but for the restraint of the youth and the youth leadership of the geopolitical zone, it could have been worse. We all know that when the youth of the geopolitical zone when they sneeze, the entire country catches cold. But for your restraint, only God knows if there would have been an economically viable Nigeria after the NSAS protests. So I thank you very much and commend you. Now, moving forward, I want to thank my governor, Governor Ifai Okowa, for the remarks he just gave on behalf of the zone. But permit me, Your Excellency, and indeed Your Excellencies, to just make a little observation. While I commend you for the, the content of your remarks, I'd like to point out that uh, maybe these remarks could have been more enriched if the inputs of the legislators, the senators, the House of Rep members, the House of Rep, the House of, just listen. This is the South-South geopolitical zone. And when you speak on behalf of the zone, you speak, you speak on behalf of everyone. But having said that, we have major stakeholders. Some elected, we are your messengers, and I think it's only proper that by you, yes. Yes, so it would have been good because we are your voices, we are your voice right there in Abuja. We are your eyes in Abuja. And it would have been good. Please, I have the floor if you don't mind. It would have been proper if our views were equally sought to enrich what the governor has just read out. We are not in any way quarreling with the content of what he just read out. But it would have been further enriched if our views were sought. In addition to that, we also have our ministers. These are the people who represent the Federal Executive Council. It, it, also, it also would have served us well if some little input is also received from them. But having said that, the tone for this interactive section was set by the leader of the delegation, Professor Gambari. The template was given to us by Mr. President coming here listening to the grievances of the people of the South-South, interact with them, and report back to us on what those grievances are. That is exactly what the chairman of the Governors Forum, South-South, has done. My brief is simple, to reassure you that all of the issues raised 
by the governors on behalf of the zone will be communicated to Mr. President. And as your representatives, the National Assembly, our job is to see to it as much as possible that all of the requests you've conversed come to fruition. But having said that, let me also express my gratitude. I express my gratitude in my capacity as the chairman of the Constitutional Review Committee of the Senate. Uh, I say this because uh, in no distant uh, uh, time, I believe uh, maybe in the first week, or by the second week of January, we're going to be going around the zones. And when we come, this is kind of the same interactive sessions we also expect to have. And I say this because most of the issues that have been raised now, that have been canvassed, most of them are issues for constitutional amendment. They are issues for constitutional review. Yes, we are a delegation of Mr. President, who is the chief executive. But the last time I checked, and most of us here who are lawyers will also know that going through the provisions of the Constitution, Mr. President does not hold any fiat to bring to uh, the fore most of the requests that has been made. Most of those requests must come through the Constitution Review Committee. And my appeal will be this. You've shown a lot of seriousness today in making this presentation. I want to appeal that for these things to become reality, the same determination you've shown here today, I appeal that after we've made, we've reviewed the submissions, and by the way, we've received a lot of submissions, after we've worked on them and we've taken our votes, you cannot, most of these issues cannot become law unless and until we also have the concurrence of two thirds of the houses of assembly and the governors are here. So we're going to appeal to you that on our part, we do what is, what is required of us as much as possible, have uh, both the Senate and the House of Reps pass this, but then we're going to require you to also reach out to your houses of assembly to give us the requisite uh, uh, concurrence. Uh, I, I recognize that in addition to uh, the remarks made by uh, our chairman, the chairman of the Governors Forum, uh, there's also looking at uh, the agenda, there's an opportunity to also hear from representatives of uh, the various uh, states, in the geopolitical zones, and most importantly, uh, uh, the youth uh, uh, leadership. Uh, because frankly, uh, as we've been told, uh, this, is really, this, really, this really is about the youth. How to address most of the concerns they raised as a, uh, a part of the answers uh, uh, request of the Mr. President. So we are here today to listen, most especially to the youth, so we can convey all of this back to Mr. President.